Recording is rolling. It is, uh, where's the card here? Uh, Wednesday, February 14th. Right, so here's top scientist for dynamics. Uh, awesome job. If you are on that list right there. Top scientist. So yesterday, you guys did a, a turntable friction lab. Gave you guys some turntables, uh, some lab weights. And figure out what was the coefficient of friction between those surfaces uh, by spinning it. And your tools were a uh, ruler and a stopwatch. Right? So uh, you guys have that out. We're going to do AP score. You guys got colored pencils on your desk. Right? Then um, I have some other uh, FRPs uh, lined up here. I'll give you guys uh, after that. Oh, and uh, what are you guys going to bring tomorrow? Bring class tomorrow. Laptop. Yeah, so uh, I'll open a multiple choice, so a set of multiple choice questions. Right? They're going to be uh, about a universal gravitation and orbits. Right. That's the other kind of half of this unit. Right? Right, and then we'll go over the answer to those on Friday, right? and that'll round out the week. Right? Then we're going to a three-day weekend, right? Three days. Well, I mean, you guys are. Right? All right. So, all right. Uh, about halfway through the day yesterday, I threw this page at you guys. Right? So this is kind of what I give my honor students, right? Or it's like ho hopefully you were able to figure this out from scratch, right? So all you had was blank piece of paper. You had to figure out the whole thing. Like, I'm gonna fix that. Right? Right. Um, but this might maybe a little more like a guided version of this, right? And the uh, had students that said, "Oh yeah, you know, created tables that looked uh, kind of like this, so they'd be on the right track." Uh, so one of the, one of the first things I do is draw a free body diagram on, say, like this mass on this uh, turntable surface, right? So free body diagram. If this was an an actual free response question on the AP exam, almost for certain that would be one, two, three points right there. Right? They would ask you to do that. Right? So we got the weight down, we got the normal force up. Now on the horizontal surface, those are balance out, right? And then there's a friction force. And if you draw it correctly, it's pointed towards the center because it's centripetal force, like a center seeking force. But, well, I shouldn't call it centripetal force. I should call it a friction force that's acting as a centripetal force, right? Because you're gonna label it friction force, right? Don't, guys, are you ever gonna label a force F sub C centripetal force? No, right? You always label it one of your conventional forces. And sometimes a force or sometimes a combination of forces will act as a centripetal force, holding something in a circular pattern, right? Something like this. Right, so I've got different trials going on. Uh, ooh, you'd want to keep track of uh, gravity field. Now here I have then centimeters per second squared. That's like 980. Uh, th th that's going to factor into the answer. If you take this whole system to different planets or take it to the moon, uh, then spin at different rates actually to break that friction. Right? Does that matter? Right? What's this radial distance? Right? Okay, that's what the ruler was for. Right? Ooh, something to do with like how far did it rotate? Uh, I thought about uh, like adding to list of supplies a protractor. I thought, well, okay, you could maybe just count the number of revolutions and convert that to radians, right? Uh, you, you could kind of make a case for you know having a protractor as a tool, like how far did it turn and how much time. Ooh, notice I got three boxes here. Maybe that was a huge hint for you guys. Always here, guys, 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 what's here? Right? You guys know that one of your AP points is always for this type three response. It's always going to be multiple trials, right? So there's a huge hint right there. Then take an average, right? If you get omega and go to velocity in radians per second, how far it turned, how much time. And remember, this has got to be in radians, right? Uh, maybe it's easy to count the number of revolutions, but it put a little conversion here. Right? There's two pi radians and a revolution, right? Uh, even before I handed you guys this page, I was walking around and listening, and so many guys were saying that. So we said, how, how many radians in revolution? I think it's like two pi. Right? So, yeah, so that would have been useful, right? right? And then finally, how do you get coefficient of friction? Now, part of the um, uh, section that we're going to score, right? Remember, it's like, Five part write up I have you guys do is analysis. And this is mostly what I'm looking for for analysis, right? How do you derive what is the coefficient of friction based on uh, like angular velocity, right? How fast it's rotating, radius, how far is this mass from this central axis, right? And, and also gravity field matters too, okay? Right. And th the answer is kind of right here, right? All right. All right. So you guys ready to score this? All right. So I came with the rubric that I think is. Pretty close to what AP would come up with. This is out of 12 points. You guys ready to score yourselves? Score yourselves? All right, so five part. Uh, first part is the question, which I gave you guys the question. What's the coefficient of static friction between the lab weight and the surface of the turntable? All right. All right. Measuring tools. Uh, I also gave you this. So everybody, one, two points. Should be like three bingo points right there. Ruler stopwatch. All right, you guys got those? Right. Maybe kind of make a case for other measuring tools too, but those, those are the really important ones. Okay. All right. All right, procedure. So I'll uh, tell you guys procedure, AP is usually looking for somewhere between like five and seven steps. I have six steps here. Let's go one point each. Right? Now also uh, like th throughout the day too, like, my other people, class and, and you guys, right? 
might have slightly different procedures. So I want to touch on that too, but, but here's what I came up with right, the other night. Uh, so one point for briefly describing a setup. Okay? Place a lab weight of known mass on a horizontal surface of a turntable. Boom. There's the entire setup. Right? Okay. So if you if you describe some kind of setup, or you know what, if you drew a diagram, go ahead and give yourself a point for that too. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, you're allowed to draw a diagram. And if you're good, if you're a good artist, right? Um, you give that point. Uh, all right. Uh, you guys know the procedure. You have to mention what you used each measuring tool to measure. So use the ruler to measure the radial distance of the lab weight from the axis rotation. Right. There may be just slightly different ways to word that, but you'd have to get that measurement. Right. That's going to be R. Just give yourself a point for that. Right. Oh, right. Uh, next up, I have a kind of a procedural uh, point, like speed up the rotation of the turntable until the lab weight breaks friction and slides off. Right. Now, I think, um, what, okay, uh, Nathan, I think you told me you had an alternate version. Or what did yeah. you say you did? Um, we used different radius points, and we just wanted at a constant speed using the stopwatch to keep track of the conditions. Ooh. Uh -huh. And then we just moved it further and further out of the um, Okay. Yeah. So you guys caught that. Uh, let's say that to you. I think that would cover this point. It's, it's a different method, but what, what he's saying he did is uh, he ended, uh, Nathan and his team. They kept this the, a constant angular velocity. But they just changed the radius until they found a point that it slipped off. Right. So yeah, I think that would work as an alternative. Yeah, I would give you credit for that. That would kind of cover this point. Okay, it's a little bit different way. Right. Um, all right. Then uh, next point. Okay. Now here's uh, you, you might have slightly different versions of this. All right. So use your best judgment. Saying okay, this is kind of fit the right. We, so some of them use stopwatch to measure time. Now, what I said I would do is I would maintain a constant angular velocity of the turntable at that moment, right? Now, you'd have to hand power this, so maybe it won't be exact, but, right? And then use the stopwatch to measure, so like, the time for five revolutions, okay? Now, so it's really specific. You don't have to have five revolutions specifically, right? But you need to say, like, how far did you turn it, right? Um, you could make a case for a protractor in this step, maybe something like that, but I'm just going to count, like, five revolutions, you know, some revolutions, how much time, right? Because you guys know then you could figure out what is uh, uh, angular velocity by saying how far to turn, how much time. Right? You have to convert to radians. Right? That's a step two. Right? 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 You guys got something about stopwatch measure some version of time? Right? Now, here's where uh, I want to mention, too. Uh, did anybody, I know my later class, uh, somebody had the procedure to, at the moment that broke friction, they took their hand off and they let it slow to a stop and they timed that. Did, did anybody do that? Did anybody do that? Okay, right. Here, uh, I want to put this on the video anyway, uh, in case, um, yeah, that's from my classes, right? right. So uh, that's that's not what I wrote on my procedure, maybe not the way I would do it, but uh, but you can do it that way, but there's an extra step you have to do. So let me do, right, so this would be, I'm, I'm making a graph for angular velocity and radians per second as a function of time, right? Now, if you found the point that it broke friction and you just maintain that angular velocity, what would this graph look like? It'd be, yeah, flat line, just constant, just constant flat line. Right. That's if you were just maintaining a constant angular velocity. Right. But if uh, the lab weight slides off, your break friction slides off, and then you let it go and it slows to a stop, right? now suppose it slows down uniformly. What does that graph look like? Yeah, it's going to go down like this, right? Where there was some, uh, I'll call it initial angular velocity, but that's really the target angular velocity you really care about because that's where lab weight break friction. Right. And then you see, so you let it slow to stop. So this goes down to zero. Right. Uh, okay. And it takes some time to do that. Right. There's some time interval. Maybe I'll call it, uh, I'll just call it T. Right. Call it delta T. That's okay too. Okay. Right. So uh, if you did uh, stopping distance over stopping time, this would be stopping time. Right. Because if you did that, if you did omega equals stopping distance over the stopping time, right? Does that tell you, here guys, 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 focus here, focus here, right? Does that tell you this initial angular velocity? No, what, what, what does it tell you? Average angular velocity, right? I'll put a little, uh, right here, I guess there's two ways to do it. You could put a bar over this, a bar says average, or you could put subscript average, right? Either way, right? And where would that be on this graph? Yeah, halfway to, the, the target value you actually care about, right? This is omega average, 
Right. And so uh, what's the graphical interpretation of this equation? It's like, well, the area of this triangle represents how far it turns. So I'll call it theta. It, it would be like the, the stopping uh, uh, angle, right? Uh, and, again, you'd want to convert to radians. So if you kind of like, oh, there's like three revolutions, then it's okay, times two pi and turns into some number of radians. Okay. Okay, divide by time. Right. But then, yeah, the target angular velocity that you'd care about would actually be two times that average angular velocity, right? So two times. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, good. Okay. All right. So then uh, here, you should draw a picture like this. Right. There was a similar scenario you guys ran into, possibly. Do you guys remember the collision carts lab? Collision carts, right? So you had to figure out, you guys were doing a conservation of momentum lab, say like, and how do you get that? Well, mass times velocity. You had, you had to know what were the velocities of carts before and after the collision. Now, you could use the speed gates. Uh, that's probably the most straightforward way to do it. If you just had a meter stick and a stopwatch, um, I, I forget if you guys did this, or I've seen students do this in the past, but they let the car roll to a stop. If that happens, it's really similar scenario, right? You have, you know, the vertical axis is different. You know, it's uh, just, uh, okay, but, but besides that, it's a similar looking graph, and you also have to, okay, stopping distance over stopping time, you have to double that again to get the exact post collision velocity. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, anyway, um, nobody in here uh, quite did exactly that, you know, which is which is fine. You know, I, I didn't either. But uh, if you did, then take those little details. That, that's how that would work out. All right. So you guys good so far? All right. So we got radial distance. We got time. Uh, ooh, multiple multiple trials. Right. Repeat three times and find an average value to, in order to reduce experimental error. So guys, do you have something about multiple trials? Because that's always going to be a point on this free response question. You're going to get an experimental design question. You're going to have to write a procedure. And one of the points is always multiple trials to reduce experimental error. Okay. And then uh, I went ahead and threw a procedure. You may put this in analysis. That's OK if you did. Uh, how are you going to figure out what is uh, angular velocity? Right. So that's angular distance over time. Right. Now you could do rotations over how however much time, right? Uh, but if you want it in radians per second, right, which is mathematically the better way to have it, you have to take the number of revolutions and multiply by two pi, right? So if I did, uh, right, if, if I'm following my exact procedure, if I'm saying, okay, let's do time for five revolutions, then that's where the two pi times five is come from. That's how many radians it would have turned. Okay? And then divide by the, the time to do that, that gives me radians per second. Uh, angular velocity and radian per second. All right, you guys good so far? You guys good? All right, analysis, analysis. All right, so uh, what I'm counting for analysis is how do you crunch all this data to figure out what is coefficient of friction? Coefficient of static friction, it would be, right? All right, so um, give yourself a point for this setup. This is the framework that you're going to solve this. Right? The centripetal force is provided by the friction force. If you have some version of that on your paper, that's a point. Uh, then I've got some middle steps. So I did some substitutions, right? Now here I substituted in uh, uh, m omega squared times r for centripetal force. Right? I could see some students, uh, I don't know if anybody in this class did, but I know my other class there showed me, they did mv squared over r, right? Now if you did that, you have to do the extra substitution of v is equal to omega times r, right? that's being squared. Okay, so it's like an extra little step, right? Right. Uh, then we got uh, normal force is equivalent to the weight. So I did that substitution right there, boom. Right, so for all these middle steps, right, if you got like some middle steps algebra that's getting you towards the answer, let's go ahead and call that a point. Okay. And then uh, let's say one point for the correct answer. If you did this all in terms in terms of data numbers, that's okay too. Right. If, if you don't have variables, if you have actual numbers that you plug in, that's okay. Go ahead and give yourself full credit. Right. I'm just showing variables here. Right. Uh, regardless of how you do it, uh, you should end up with uh, this at the end, some, some version of that. And then finally, the last point, this is point number 12 for a correct conclusion, coefficient of static friction is equal to, right? you're just looking for a number. Uh, guys, what are the units on coefficient of friction? Yeah, there, there are no units, right? Uh, or you can make a case for like newtons per newton, right? which just cancels out anyway. Right? Uh, guys, what's kind of a reasonable ballpark of values for coefficient of friction? Like uh, if you got 0.7, does that sound pretty reasonable? Yeah, I, th I think that sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, it's kind of on the higher end, but I can believe that, right? Uh, if you got like 0. 0.5, 0. 0.3, those are all really good values. So, so many, right? Usually you look for somewhere between like 0. 0.1 and 0. 0.8, maybe somewhere there. Right? Um, 
We got something bigger than that. That's okay. Right. Right. All right. So you guys got yourself squared out of 12. Squared out of 12. All right. So uh, just uh, before you walk out of class, uh, turn that in the gray tray, and I'll give you guys lab credit for that. All right. Uh, next on my agenda, uh, let's do. All right. I've got some FRQs printed and a scoring rubric. So I'm going to hand you one of these right now and give you guys some time to do this right here. 